we would like to welcome you all to our Sabbath School lesson, lesson number 10. And the title of our Sabbath School lesson preview for today, for this week, is Jesus Won Their Confidence. I'd like to invite you for a word of prayer today as we begin our lesson preview. Our Father which art in heaven, your name is worthy to be worshipped, praised, and glorified. Father, we would like to um, entrust to you our discussion. Please continue to direct our thoughts, our words, and especially how we can apply our lesson in our lives, not only for this week, but for the rest of our lives. May we be blessed as we learn from each other, and I pray for those people who are tuning in right now that they will also be blessed. Continue to be with them, and thank you so much for hearing and answering my prayer. I pray this in the loving name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior the soon coming King. Amen and amen. The Lord is good and He is good all the time. So this week I would like to focus what the uh, lesson is uh, telling us all about. It has been a continuity during the, during the past few weeks. And I call this MOH143. You, you might be asking a question, what is MOH143? Well, it just simply stands for Ministry of Healing, page 143, 143, and I think Sister Ellen G. White was very inspired to write this uh, um, passage that we are about to read before we break it down and we will focus on what we are, on what we are going to discuss this afternoon. And so I once again believe in the inspiration in the writings of uh, uh, Ellen G. White because she wrote it in in this manner and i would like to read quoting from this uh, from this book the ministry of healing and you know what i would like to strongly encourage all of you to get hold of this if you have this book in your library for some reasons read it or reread it it's going to be very helpful especially in the in our time today ministry of healing page 143 by the way 143 stands for i love you well you might oh. be thinking well, why is that well, I love you, <laughs> I is one, love is four, you is three. So one, four, three. Okay? I like to read here, and I quote verbatim. Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people, talking about community. The Savior mingled with men. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them follow me. So these are the sec uh, six, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, six steps that uh, uh, we are being told through the writings of Mrs. White how we can be able to reach out our community. It's, it's a practical step how to love other people that's how i think about it and so the first step is this the savior mingled with men meaning to say he's inclusive he's not exclusive he is inclusive he includes all those who needs him he mingles with with races with different races with different genders with different uh, uh persuasions people of different positions so jesus mingled with men inclusive desire their good meaning he has intention he had this mission and intention to do good isn't that a biblical, very biblical uh, uh, injunction or command for us to, to have the intention? By the way, let me ask you, what is your intention in your life as well? He showed sympathy, meaning to say he's interested if they are sad, lonely, depressed. He is concerned, in, in, in other words, meaning to say he's not only saying, hey, how are you doing? He listens to them by, by his words, not only by his words, by his gestures or his nonverbal communication. So he had this interest. And people, if during that time, I could just imagine from my, from my mind's eyes that people are really attracted to him because he is interested. Right? Okay. He ministered to their needs. That, that is what we discussed last week. He has this intervention, meaning to say he... he now that after that he listened now he is he, he knows what is the need and he therefore intervened and provided for the needs of people whether it's going to be physical healing or whether it's a material need or whatever it is he provided and then what we're going to study for this uh, for this week is 
he won their confidence, and that is mean he has the, established the interpersonal relationship, what we call interpersonal relationship. And next week, uh, I, I'm not sure if we will study that next week, he bade them follow me, meaning to say he begins the discipleship process. If that is, this is the quotation from MOH143, I love you. Mrs. Mrs. White uh, wrote this, and so I'm very glad that we could study today one their confidence. Jesus won my confidence. Jesus won your confidence. And so the question today is, how, how are you with other people? Are you winning their confidence? Okay? So another question that I would like to uh, ask you is, what is confidence? Is there anybody who would like to uh, share with me? What is confidence according to your understanding? Confidence. Trust. Oh. Trust, yes, it's there. Trust. What else? What is confidence? Huh? In the Latin word, it means con, with, fedi or fedis, meaning faith. In Hebrew, it's am, where we get the word amen. Now, confidence is defined as with faith. Believe or trust is what you were saying. And I added here unwavering commitment, confidence. So today we will going to uh, tackle how Jesus won the confidence of other people. Now, the Bible employs a lot of uh, meaning about faith. So with faith, believe or trust unwavering commitment and so which one is stronger faith or belief it's the same, it's the same. <laughs> meaning to say they have the the same um, um, the same meaning now it is confidence is often, often translated as believe in the context of a saving faith in God in other words, it means the truth in the context of Christ's example of winning people's confidence. The implication would be that evoking the kind of trust that comes from seeing unwavering and solid commitment, which in this case came through mingling, desiring their good, showing sympathy, ministering. Meaning to say, these steps resulted in the winning of their confidence. Meaning Jesus planted this uh, these deeds or these uh, steps that we call because in the first place he loved people he loved people genuinely loved people he, 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 he gave himself for people and so the natural result of these four steps is to win their confidence there's no, there's no going around it it's, you have to have some of the, you have to have these steps before you win the confidence of others and then you disciple uh, people as, uh, just like what Jesus had done. So winning the confidence. Now, do we win people to ourselves or do we win people, people's confidence to, to God? Huh? What do you think? Do we win people because we are charismatic, we are, we are likable, we are lovable? Or we win people because of our higher calling, and that is to point them or to lead them to Jesus Christ. Okay? So we have uh, defined confidence. It is the uh, uh, discipline of interpersonal relationship. Now, not all people are born with interpersonal skills, they may call it. But there are people who develop interpersonal skills as they are being drawn to Jesus right when you are drawn to Jesus it means that you're able to be uh, you're able to be taught and you're able to adjust yourself to humble yourself or or to uh, to be transformed by the renewing of your minds all right so let us go through with this uh, illustration that I've had as I've said we are focusing here we are focusing on the uh, aspect of confidence so I, I I draw here three uh, important uh, aspects, I will call it, of confidence. First, confidence must be constant, right? It has to be constant. What do you mean when you say constant? Huh? Anybody? Constant means to say it's, it's uh, 
same. Stays the same. We need to say it's it. Do you think it might falter sometimes? But it, it's the same. It's constancy. That's no change. No change. <laughs> Jesus does not change. He is love. He is a God of love. He is, he, he is uh, caring. He is compassionate. And then we have this aspect of continuity. Some people, if they are, um, you know, they are not able to build confidence in, in God or in themselves or, or others are not won by their confidence, they, they were not able to continue. Meaning to say, if you, have, if, if you have confidence, you will continue because you believe in what uh, the Lord would like you to do. So there is that continuity. And then I, instead, the, the, the lesson described, describes this as uh, credibility. But I wrote, uh, the lesson, I'm sorry, describes this as reliability, but I use the term credibility so that it will be um, the same um, for our understanding. But it also means reliability. So we need to have these aspects in order for people to know after doing these steps, we were, people will see that, we, that they could have confidence, that they could trust the God that we serve. Now, if we draw people to trust in ourselves, it will doom to fail. It will not be, uh, it will not be confidence. It will be, perhaps, cultic when, when personality is 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 the one that attracts people, instead of God. It becomes cultic, not not uh, confidence in God, which we are discussing in the in in our lesson, winning confidence. And then there's this uh, credibility, the the uh, the aspect of. Uh, your track record, the integrity. Let us go through some of the scripture text here before we, we go through our discussion. So if you have your Bibles with you, let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. If you are there, can you please read it aloud? Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. Open your Bibles with us as well. Abraham believed the Lord. And he credited to him his righteousness. Who is Abraham? He is the father of faith. faith. Who has confidence? Does Abraham had confidence with God or God has a confidence with Abraham? Both. Both. So it's a mutual, mutual relationship. So Abraham has confidence with the word of God, in the word of God, to the word of God, with the word of God. And God has confidence with Abraham. That's why this verse is a mutual um, relationship because Abraham believed the Lord and the Lord accounted to him as righteousness. So meaning to say when we believe in the Lord, we are called righteous. Question, was Abraham righteous in, in, its, in, its, in his earthly, in his earthly, uh, in his earthly, uh, Life was he in 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 essence was he righteous? No, no, he was not. He was like you and me. He was a struggling sinner in need of God's grace. But God imputed, God declared or justified him as righteous because of his belief. Strong word, belief. It's not only just word or lip service. It is an action. We remember Abraham. He sacrificed uh, the greatest. Uh, test of uh, faith is he sacrificed his only son uh, a, a, a reminiscence uh, uh, um, what they call this um, um, a prelude to what Jesus was about to uh, was about to, to do for 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 uh, or God has to do for um, his son Jesus Christ so Abraham was the foreshadow uh, the, the the type and Jesus uh, and God was the antitype through Jesus Christ. All right, so Abraham was faithful because he believed. Oh, God imputed righteousness to him because he believed in God, right? Is that correct? Okay, let's read some more scriptures. Uh, Numbers 14, verse 11. If you have your Bibles with you, Numbers 14, verse 11. Let's see what this uh, passage or this verse is talking about. Numbers 14, verse 11. Okay, can someone read it, please, Pastor? 
The Lord said to Moses, How long will, you treat, will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me, in spite of all the miraculous signs I have performed among them? What is the context of this uh, passage? They were what? Rebelling. They were rebelling, even in spite of the fact that God showed them His mighty deliverance and miracles. So there are people, and in fact, they are God's people, who will show contempt who will show the opposite of confidence. They will show what? Contempt against the Lord. They will, they will not believe. And this happens, sad to say, to the people of God, who is supposed to be uh, a community of believers. All right, let's read through. Um, what happens in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 9? I'm just going through some verses uh, so that we can have the context of where we're going uh, to discuss uh, in our preview today. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. All right. I love to, to just open this Bible because this Bible is, is just easy to, to flip. It's, uh, and it's big. The, the texts are, are big as well. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. All right? And I would like to begin reading here. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I feed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. Verse 3. For you are still carnal. What is carnal? Worldly. Worldly. Living in the flesh. For were there, these are the, the fruits of the uh, a carnal nature. Envy, strife, and divisions among you. Are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Obviously, there is going, there is a, there is a, an obvious division among preachers and and spiritual leaders. Verse five: Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believe? Meaning to say, there there are people who believe in in Paul, there are people who believe in Apollos. So there is obvious division. It becomes now into, it centers now into the person. Uh, of the apostles rather than God himself who is the source of confidence as the Lord gave to each one I planted Paul was saying Apollos water but God gave the increase I like this what does this verse has to say what does this verse has to say meaning to say they are they're working together for the for the glory of God for for the work of God and even the one started the other one nurtured or the other one watered it was god who gave what increase. gained uh, gave the increase. increase meaning to say there should be no what's the problem there competition that's the problem when we when we are our confidence is not in god our confidence is in ourselves the result will be competition i am better than apollos I am better than Paul. I am better than this apostle. In our setting, it could be, it may not be um, explicit like that, but you can see the, the strife, the envy, the jealousy, the, the, the little things that is happening in our church. That's, that's why the, the, the community is suffering because in our church, we, we're supposed to serve our community, but we are, we are busy. <laughs> We are busy fighting amongst ourselves and that's why the confidence, the confidence of the community is not in the church of Jesus Christ. What is the sign that the, uh, the people who don't believe in Jesus, uh, the, who don't believe in, in, in the Word of God or Jesus Christ, they may know that we are uh, children of God is when we what? Love one another. That's the sign. That's the, uh, that's the, um, the tangible um, not only implied but explicit way for us to be known as people who, lo who love God or who has God in our lives or in our church. So there, obviously, Paul, Apollos, and the others, there, 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 there are some contentions and competition, as I've said 
earlier. Who then? Who then is Paul and Apollos? That I, I, read, I already read that. So neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. The focus is not us. The focus is who? God. The focus should be, the confidence should be in God. Period. Why we are doing this? Why we are doing good to our community? Why we are showing uh, desiring their good? Why we are showing sympathy? Why we are ministering to them to, to other needs? Is so that we will look good? No. So that God will be glorified. So that God's love will be seen, will be shown, or will be felt, or will be experienced by the community, correct? So this is the passage here. All right, let's let's continue reading the, the scriptures. All right, verse 9. For we are God's, I love this. For we are God's what? Co-workers. Co-workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. So the solution is not competition. The solution is co-workers. Right? Isn't that beautiful? Are we not co-workers together? Because we believe in the Lord. We have the same aspirations, the same mission, the same desire, and that is to... To give God the glory, co-workers. So this is what we we wanted to we wanted to express today. So let us continue reading our. Now, do you remember the experience of Daniel uh, when he was uh, 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 in the kingdom of the Median the Persians? You know, before he was in the kingdom of the Babylonian. Let's go. Let's read. Can somebody read Daniel chapter six, verses one to three? Daniel chapter 6 verses 1 to 3. Let's, let's see. Did, uh, was Daniel able to win the, the confidence of the king of Babylon and also now the king of uh, Persia? Meet in the Persia? Darius? Okay, please read it. Daniel chapter 6 verses 1 to 3. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. Mm. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself from among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities, the king had planned to set him apart over the whole kingdom. Wow! Daniel was, what's the word? Exceptional. How could you be exceptional if you... How could you be exceptional, by the way? If you did not spend time with God, that's my, uh, that's my uh, statement. But how was Daniel able to, to exceed expectations? Meaning he was excellent. He was not only brilliant, but he was uh, able to, to, to organize perhaps or to... He just excelled. What was the secret of Daniel? What was the secret of Daniel? Help me out. Help me out. In, in the story that you know, what's the secret of Daniel? Huh? <laughs> diet all right yeah that's that's number one I believe you so Daniel secrets all right prayer. diet oh prayer very good these are correct because it's in Daniel chapter uh, I think chapter 1 verse verse 8 prayer Woo! you hit it what else faith. faith he has faith in God because even though he was thrown into the the the, 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 the lions then he was able to 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 have confidence in God. Wow, amazing, amazing uh, uh, example of Daniel. Uh, if your life is at stake, will you still have confidence in God? Let, let me just be more practical in our, in our present situation, in our post-Christian post society, so to speak. If you lose your job as a Christian, will you still have confidence in God? Think about it. If you lose a loved one, or you're going through a difficult relationship, a divorce, a messy, broken relationship with your spouse, will you still have confidence that God desires your good, God is showing you sympathy, that God wants to listen to you, that God wants... These are questions, but sometimes, many times, or oftentimes, in our Christian walk, we are set uh, we are set in this situation where, where we begin to slide into the abyss of, of doubting or losing our confidence in what God can do for us. Are there some moments? Yes. Even among clergy or pastors, there are some moments when 
we slip through uh, private, we, I call it private depressions, private uh, situation where you begin to reflect and say, I'm doing God's work. How come these things are happening to me? And it erodes a little bit, I'm not saying the whole thing, but it erodes a little bit your, our confidence in what God can do. So this is the work of the devil. And our secret and our way in order for us to be able to overcome is Daniel's secret. Diet, which as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, if we will only read the M-O-H, Ministry of Healing, I recommend this book. If we read this in our time, we will be the cutting-edge leaders in, in promoting healthy lifestyle, uh, healthy cooking, healthy choices, and, 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 and healthy exercise. So diet plays a major role in, our, in preserving our minds. I'm harping here because nowadays people, it seems especially our church, the, the God's elect, <laughs> the people of the book, seems to be confused of, of what's happening uh, in our world today. So let's go back to that ancient uh, prescription of our Daniel's secret, diet. And number two, prayer. I think this is, this is very important. That's why our church is embarking prayer. We highlight in our church in Phil Am, Hinsdale Phil Am, the need for prayer. It's not just a, a statement. It should be the lifestyle of our, of our people. So when you have overwhelming dif difficulties, friends, do you pray to the Lord and, and cast your confidence in what He can do for you? Sometimes God does not answer right away. Sometimes God, it, God uh, uh, reserves, perhaps, so to speak, or sometimes God allows. Now, that word is, is hurting to some people. Why did God allow these things to happen? And I would say, why not? Job and other Bible heroes, God allowed but they came out after the trials. They came out triumphant, triumphant, and they were they came out prosperous. So Daniel is our example, and Daniel has belief or faith, confidence in God. He had this personal, interpersonal relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Aren't you blessed today to hear that? Uh, to hear that uh, 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 encouragement from Daniel. All right, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Now, it's interesting that God's people, after they left Egypt, they were commanded to be obedient. I would call it, I would even uh, push the envelope right now, that what happens uh, with God's people as recorded in Exodus, in, in, the, in the, the Exodus, and also in Numbers and Deuteronomy, is, is exactly parallel, perhaps I would say, is accurately parallel to where we are right now. Egypt, during the time of Moses, in our time the world is our Egypt. We are about to get out of Egypt to go to the promised land. The promised land of Moses was the Canaan, a land of milk and honey. Our promised land right now is not the United States of America. It is the heavenly kingdom of God. Amen? So, so we are about to, so I'm seeing this as a parallel. That's why we are studying Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 9. It's a parallel because during that time, God's people were disobedient. God's people were hard-headed, hard-necked, so to speak. Well, all of our heads are, are hard, but I'm, what I'm saying is uh, people are, are really, um, um, uh, they are stubborn. <laughs> they, if you tell them, read the Bible, they would go to their, to their other, <laughs> other hobbies, <laughs> other, uh, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to compete nowadays with uh, technology. It, seem, it seems that the devil to me, especially for our young people, our children, it seems that the devil is so attract, attractive to our, to our young people, I'm talking about in our church. Instead of spending time reading the Word, they're, they're somewhere playing. Ah. Uh, no offense, but that's just my observation. So, it's a parallel. From the time of Moses, in our time, we are about to get out of our own Egypt. Egypt is a symbol of uh, 
there's no absolute authority. Uh, Egypt is a is represented by um, plurality, meaning to say you worship your own. I don't care. You worship your own god. I have my own god. Everything is good. Everything is cool. That's Egypt, and we are now living. And and besides, our music and our movies and our media, they still have this sim symbols coming from Egypt. If you notice that uh, carefully, even television, they still have the ancient symbols from Egyptian. Meaning to say, friends, we are bounded right now. We are here in this Egyptian bondage, so to speak, spiritually, morally, and uh, and 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 we are about to embark to a new journey. So let us read this Deuteronomy chapter four, verses one to nine. Uh, Pastor Dave, could you read verse one? And until verse uh, verse 9 as we go, I'll just stop you as we discuss. Deuteronomy 4 verses 1 to 9. Are you ready there uh, in, your, in your homes or wherever you are? All right, let's go. Hear now, O Israel, the decrees and the laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and go and take possession of the land that the Lord, your, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Okay. If you obey, you will live and you will arrive. <laughs> you will what? You will be able to possess the land in our time i'm not talking about the land of milk and honey i'm talking about the heavenly home i hope that's clear all right so that's one point verse two do not add to what i command you do not, do not subtract from it but keep the commands of the lord your god that i give you all right so what is saying no plus no minus meaning to say the word of god is the word of god that's why today in my funeral i i had a funeral service today and and a guy in the Abraham Lincoln uh, National Cemetery pulled me and said, uh, Pastor, what do you believe? And I said, do you, uh, he asked me questions like, do you believe in the secret rapture? Do you believe in, 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 immor in, in, in the immortality of the soul? And I said, I believe in what the Bible is saying. And I don't believe in rapture. I, don't, I only believe that death is sleep, unconscious sleep. And I believe that uh, Jesus will come audibly, visibly, and literally. So he, he's not a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. He told me, I, I, I study the Bible, and, I, and yeah, as long as we believe in the Bible, we are good. So friends, we cannot add or subtract to what the Word of God says. I told that this guy that I talked to this morning uh, when during, my funeral, uh, during the funeral service that I led, uh, I said to him, the Word of God is very plain. If you read it, you will be transformed. It's very plain. So you don't have to be, you don't have to complicate. So that's what we are trying to understand here. Do not add or do not take or do not sub subtract from it. Verse 3, continue. You saw with your own eyes what the Lord did at Baal Peor. The Lord your God destroyed them from among you, everyone who followed the Baal of Peor. Okay. Uh, Mrs. White said something about, uh, let us not forget... Uh, uh, help me out. Let's not forget our history of the past. There, okay. The the there Lord's is Lord. nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget what the Lord has done for us in the past. This is exactly what Moses was trying to tell the ancient Israelites. And this is what God is telling us through, through, through the, his messenger, Ellen G. White, also that if we look back how God brought us where we are, we should not... We should not be, we should not lose our confidence to God, but we should in fact be more confident that indeed God exists and God, God was there with us during our, ex, during our difficult experience. All right? All right, verse 4, follow us closely. But all of you who held fast to the Lord your God are still alive today. Amen! All of you who what? Ooh. Wow. That's, a, that's an assurance. That's a, that's a, that's a statement of, of, of uh, um, uh, surety for, for, for me. If we hold fast, it's just like in Matthew. Those who endure till the end will be saved. Isn't that right? Amen. Those who endure till... I spoke again to one of the, the persons that was there. And we were having a, our chat. And, uh, so... Uh, I said, uh, your family, your, your family, uh, most of them are members of the Seventh Adventist Christian Church. So what about you? H how are you? So he said to me, Pastor, I'm so sorry. Uh, 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 my wife is the only one going to church. Oh, so 
she's going to Seventh Day Adventist uh, Church uh, somewhere in Indiana. Pastor, no, she's a Catholic, and I don't go anymore to church. Since when? Long time. Is there anyone who visited you? Nobody visited me. And I told him, there are about 34 million Seventh Day Adventist Christians worldwide who accepted Jesus. Out of that, about 13 million have been missing or have not been traced or had simply left the faith. There's only about 19 to 20 million right now. Half of them attend church regularly or more or less according to statistics. So you are one of those who fell through the cracks. But I ask him, do you still uh, do you still believe in what the church believes? Yes, I still have. Meaning to say the seeds, the seeds that, that were planted is still fresh. But I was thinking of, of, of him or of the other persons. How beautiful could it have been if they continued in the faith? His children, his, the in, in his sphere of influence. So now his children doesn't go to church as well, doesn't serve the community i don't know maybe they serve somewhere else but obviously they are not connected to the community of faith so that they could be able to win confidence of the community right it's sad it is a sad situation where where people are are not continuing they lost their confidence in the word of god and the word of god is is deposited in the church because the church believes in the word of god that's the cycle, right? So this text is very poignant, I would say. Or right, let's continue, Pastor, where, where, where you left off. Verse five. Okay. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of. Mm -hmm. Verse six. Continue. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to all nations who hear about all these decrees and say, "Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people." <sighs> wow. Listen, folks. We have to be careful because, listen, not only people but nations are observing us. We, we are the light of the world. We are the salt of this sinful world. And we have to be careful to what? What does the Bible say? Be careful to observe the commands of the Lord, the statutes. So you might be asking, what are these commands? Obviously, this is a command to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, with, with, all, your, with all your strength, and to love other people as you love yourself. Going back to mingling, desiring, showing sympathy, ministry, and winning their confidence. The reason why we have to take care of our, of our name as Seventh-day Adventist Christians and I tell you, this is going. This this is a struggle right now in our church. There's so, been so many, um, uh, would you call it, uh, uh, black propaganda, for lack of a better word, for lack of better words. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, you can call it. There are disinformation about our name. So what does the wise man say? Uh, uh, a good name is to be chosen. Chosen rather than riches what would you do with your riches if your name is uh, implicated with illegal or 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 uh, activities that are not supposed to be christian so the friends listen to this listen to this so confidence is an interpersonal relationship personal relationship with god will draw will draw people to have confidence in god through us as agents so we go through, we, we are constant in our, in our serving, in our, uh, we are continuing our serving, we are, we are credible in our serving because we are authentic Christians, and look what happened. We gain social, social investment, our capital, what's our lessons. Meaning to say, the, the, the community sees and they, oh, they're doing good work. They are building homes, they're repairing homes for free to other people who can't afford. Oh, they're, they're, they're giving out food, they're giving out stuff. They're doing good, and then we will have. They will. The people will know our character, our identity. Oh, who are they? The Seventh Day Adventist Church. Oh, they are doing good. Wow, 
I haven't, <laughs> I haven't heard that yet. Uh, oh, are you Seventh Day Adventist group? Oh, you, I heard you do a lot in your community. You're doing well. That's what the verse that we read is trying to say. Be careful because we are, our identity or our character is at stake. Not just because we wanted to have a good name and, and, just, and just put in under the rug all our garbage there or our dirt. No! I'm saying we are credible, we are, we are able to continue, we are constant because we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then after that, we will have our social charisma. Now this is where the influence comes in. This is where we, we, we even though we, we, are, we are not uh, good in inviting people, the people are beginning to, to talk about us and they will begin to enter our church and say, I'd like to know why this church is doing good to the community. Isn't that a, a beautiful um, uh, miniature um, uh, example of, of what God wanted His people to be, right? So, friends, we have to be, we have to, we have to consider this so that people or the nation will say, great this nation is great, is wise, and understanding people. Woo! How I wish. Maybe not in my time, or maybe in my time. I don't know. That Hinsdale Phil Am will be seen as a church that does good for its community. That we are a, a people who are, who are invested in our community. And you know what? Those people who doesn't know God will begin to to have confidence in what we do and when the time comes for the Lord to call them our influence will can can impact their lives and say come join us the Lord is about to come isn't that beautiful amen amen and amen let's read the last or the last two verses I believe and what other verse 7 and what other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us when we pray to him and what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as wow. this body of laws I am setting before you today? Verse 8. Okay, verse 9. Only be careful and watch yourselves closely, so you do not forget the things your eyes have seen, or let them slip from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children to their children after them. Wow. Watch and teach. Propagate. Proclaim and propagate. Watch and and teach. That's what the Bible is saying. How beautiful are the feet of those who carry, who carry the gospel, not only by words but by their actions. So I'm talking about here, friends. When we wanted to win the, when Jesus won the confidence of, of, of the people, he not only say it, he acted. He speaks, and he acted. Wow, it's 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 very sublime to. To understand there are still some more verses but I'd like to just focus on Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47 let's read the accounts of the Apostles in the New Testament Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47 all right so can you please read it Pastor? they devoted themselves to the Apostles teaching and to the fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to any as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The Lord added daily some of the words that i just i'm just hearing from this text is devoted they devoted themselves to study they devoted themselves to to organize themselves and how to to do good to their community they they, they were together they were united in one accord of in one accord of love they were com communal they they sold their properties they 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 give they give what they have and they shared and then the good thing about this is the lord added who added? The Lord added numbers. Talking about church growth. Friends, do you like to see your church grow? I have a very simple solution or simple suggestion. Go back to Ministry of Healing 
page 143. If the church will move in these steps, friends, I guarantee the Word of God is true and sure. Your church will grow. My church will grow. If we are aligned or in tune with Jesus Christ, He show He mingled with people, meaning it's inclusive. When you mingle, you don't frown. You smile. You, you show that you're joyful and happy, right? You don't mingle and, man, I have a bad day in the office and you don't mingle like that. You, you mingle as though you're rejecting sunshine and you're, and you're rejecting uh, happiness or, or cheerfulness in, in, among men. And they, you desire their good. Your intention is not for, 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 for yourselves to be exalted, but for Jesus to be exalted. Now, you might be asking, how, how, how could we do this? How could we? Yeah. Desiring their good, the intention is, is, is to exalt Jesus. They will know by your actions by your words and then you begin to show sympathy if they have problems you listen minister to their needs meaning to say intervene whatever you can do to help give up give and being kind and then win their confidence because they will look for for that person who has something that they are missing that they want to have right because that person has been with Jesus so this is the secret of church growth and then the last step is discipleship invitational follow me so you can see now that confidence has its streams constancy continuity credibility and then we have our social investment our identity is known in our community and then we will have influence people will be added by the thousands how I long for that day when when the, the Pentecostal spirit will be amongst us because we have done what God would like us to do and it's summarized in this one word love one four three I love you right so the question right now that we are going to discuss is this question number one in our lesson question number one okay let's go back to our Sabbath school lesson here so I hope and pray that you understand clearly the concept that we are we are trying to to discuss here and trying to um, understand as well so let us ask our, ourselves this question there are only two questions how do we reconcile this idea of building good ties with our community and getting a good name in the community with Jesus? Writing, warning in, warning in Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. How do we work through what appears to be a strong contradiction? So good ties and good names, how do we balance this by the prophecy of Jesus himself that we will be hated? How do we answer this? Yes, we will be hated because the world does not love God. But does that mean that we have, we have to stop doing good? No. I mean to say we have to do good because not because we just wanted the, the favors of people there. Favors are, are important, our influence uh, uh, is important but because first and foremost Jesus did it and Jesus commanded us to do it and now this is the hard part will we, are we willing to do this are we willing to do this we know that people will hate us according to Ma to the, the gospel of Matthew right Matthew 10 verse 22 you will be hated so that's why the context of Matthew 24 he who endures till the end is I believe I believe that he who endures to love till the end because the love of many will wax cold in a time of terrorism, in a time of terrible calamities, in a time of, of uncertainty in our finances. People's love will wax cold. And Jesus was telling his disciples during the time before, before he, was, he was betrayed and crucified and before he will come again the second time, he warns us that we must endure to love. Confidence. People will have confidence if we have continuity. Meaning to say, this is non-negotiable. We should be constant. Yes, there will be discouragement. You might be, might be asking, yes, I'm doing good, but how come people are not treating me good? That is what the Bible tells us all about. People will still hate you even though you do, you do good, but that doesn't mean we should stop doing good. Am I right? We should be it's hard, I know. <laughs> it, I'm just saying, but I, I'm trying to feel, how would I, should I continue even though I'm being opposed or persecuted? Friends, if we never give up, 
doing good, the Lord will reward us someday. Not for the sake of reward, but because we love the Lord and we wanted to honor Him by doing good. Amen? Amen. All right, so that's the tension there. But let me ask you, Pastor, uh, and also those who are viewing us today, what will you do? Will you continue to do good even though you know that people will hate you someday because of your, of your, uh, because of your faith? That's the only way. That's the only way. There's no other option. Well, what, uh, you could do, if you don't do good, that means you're doing bad. <laughs> if, you're, if you're doing good, if you're not doing good, you're doing bad. Correct. But there are people who are, not, who are neither doing good nor doing bad. They're neutral. And that's not what we are trying to emphasize here in our study, right? We're trying to, I'm trying to motivate us, motivate myself to really walk the talk here. Good ties and good name, even though people will hate us someday. Next question, the last. All right. Gifts from others and not of our faith is one that we need to think about carefully. All right. Mrs. White talked favorably about receiving gifts from those who weren't even believers in Jesus. In Ministry of Healing, chapter uh, page 340. However, she spoke very sharply against churches that took money from those in the liquor business, even its own members in good and regular standing. She said that money from these people is stained with blood. A curse is on it. Now, how can we know right from wrong in regard to whom we take gifts from, from or cooperate with in general, even for a good cause? I just wrote here, do we receive gifts from illegal source? But we don't know. Let's say we don't know if it's a legal source. If, if that drug lord or, or crime boss will donate because he or she saw good things happening, donates to us a hundred million dollars. <laughs> wow, that's too big. Will we accept? But we don't know. How do we know? I think the question is if we know. But if we don't know, we'll just accept? <laughs> if we don't know, we have no choice. We have to take them at... Uh, but the how about if the reputation is questionable? The names are surfacing in the newspaper and there are a, a taint of, of question of the illicit trade or, or even a trace. They, good intentions could lead us to hell. The, uh, the road to hell is full of good intentions too. Did Jesus accept the gift that Mary poured on his feet? Of course, Mary, uh, more, uh, Mary broke it and pour, poured it out to, to the uh, feet and the head of Jesus. Would the church have accepted her gift? Well, the church, uh, you're talking about that money came from uh, illegal, uh, <laughs> I would say, uh, immoral means, right? So this is a hard question. Should we accept gifts from tainted, irreputable sources? I can probably tell you, uh, some, some pastor will say, just don't ask, just receive. <laughs> just don't ask any question. But if we know our members who, who, is, uh, who has a store, a, le a liquor store or a smoke shop, a member of the church, that's impossible, but that happens sometimes. Should we get donation or, or offering from that person? Now that, that is a, a question we need to ponder upon, right? Uh, are we... Uh, we are in the boundary of are we condoning or are we are we uh, are we trying to uh, uh, stick or or uplift the standard of, of Jesus so these are how about the tithes uh, we don't ask questions where where, <laughs> where the tithe uh, uh, comes from but if if the person even then we don't know there's there's confidentiality that that's what there you go that there's confidentiality in in, in, in giving tithes even pastors uh, they're 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 not uh, uh, they are not allowed uh, some uh, treasure they don't they are not allowed to see who's who's giving what uh, but my point is this the point is this we have to be careful in receiving gifts for good causes because it might it might endanger it might question the confidence of the community, the confidence of the community in our church, right? So they're, oh, they're receiving, they're connected with the crime bosses in Chicago. <laughs> We're in trouble. We're trying to do good, but if our names, our name is attached to this, yeah. the appearance of evil will, will, will minimize the impact that we are supposed to achieve. Uh, 
So let us be careful. Uh, God is a ways, and that, that takes a lot of prayer and a, a lot of wisdom and a lot of counsel by many people. I cannot give you... Uh, a subs uh, it's a situational basis. But for now, let's just understand that there's nothing of that sort happening in our, in our church. Amen? Amen? All right, so let's review. So confidence is always directed to God, and we are His agents, and we are conduits of Christ's confidence. We are... Uh, Christ, conf uh, people's confident in cr confidence in Christ. We are not to draw people to have confidence in us because that will resort into a, a questionable and cultic situation later on. Because instead of presenting Christ and He is our Master and Lord, we are presenting ourselves. That should not be the case. It should be Jesus Christ, who who has our confidence because He won us. He 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 won our confidence because of His great love. Amen. Let's bow our heads as we close. Father in heaven, I thank you and I praise you for this lesson today. I thank you that Jesus won our confidence. And so by extension and by reformation and revival, we would like to follow what Jesus uh, exemplified for us, that we should win also Christ, uh, Christ followers, uh, those people in our community, those people who have not heard Jesus Christ, by the manners, by the gentleness, by the firmness, by by the character of Jesus Christ, who is love. Father, may we continue to love one another. May we be constant in loving one another. May we have the credibility that indeed we are not only talking the talk, but we're walking the walk. Lord, I hope and pray that Hinsdale Philam will be a loving church, will be a church known to care for its community, that we care for the seniors, for our spouses, for our singles, and for those who are suffering, for those who are sick. We are a caring church. That's what I want to see. And that's what I want to be. And that's where, that's where I want to be, I mean. That's where I want this church to go. So, Father in heaven, continue to bless us. And thank you for those who are tuning in right now for us. Bless their, with us and to us. Bless their families and bless all of us. Thank you for forgiving us all our sins. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.